That's my last duchess, painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. I call that piece a wonder now. Frau Pandolf's hands work busily a day, and there she stands. Will it please you sit and look at her? I said Frau Pandolf would design, for never read strangers like you that pictured countenance, the depth and passion of its earnest glance. But to myself they turned, since none puts by the curtain I have drawn for you but I, and seemed as they would ask me, if they durst, how such a glance came there. So, not the first of you to turn and ask thus. So it was not her husband's presence only called that spot of joy into the Duchess' cheek. Perhaps Frau Pandolf chanced to say, her mantle laps over my lady's wrist too much, or paint must never hope to reproduce the faint half-flush that dies along her throat. Such stuff was courtesy, she thought, and cause enough for calling up that spot of joy. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked whatever she looked on, and her looks went everywhere. So it was all one. My favour at her breast, the dropping of the daylight in the west, the bow of cherry some officious fool broke in the orchard for her, the white mule she rode with round the terrace, all and each would draw from her alike the approving speech, or blush at least. She thanked men, good, but thanked somehow, I know not how, as if she ranked my gift of a nine hundred years old name with anybody's gift, who'd stoop to blame this sort of trifling. Even had you skill in speech, which I have not, to make your will quite clear to such an one, and say that this or that in you disgusts me. Here you miss, or there exceed the mark. And if she let herself be lessened so, nor plainly set her wits to yours, forsooth, and made excuse, e'en then would be some stooping, and I choose Never to stoop. Oh, sir, she smiled, no doubt, whene'er I passed her. But who passed without much the same smile? And this grew. I gave commands. And then all smiles stopped together. And there she stands, as if alive. Will it please you rise? We'll meet the company below then. I repeat, the Count, your master's no munificence, is ample warrant that no just pretence of mine for dowry will be disallowed, though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed at starting, is my object. Nay, we'll go together down, sir. Notice Neptune, though, taming a seahorse, thought a rarity, which Klaus of Innsbruck cast in bronze for me.